I'm standing here with uh, Josh and Gabe, who go away. Is that my cake? Josh, what's with the banana? <laughs> you said that wrong. I know. Bandana. <laughs> bandana. 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 Oh, right. Turn it off. Turn it off. Rachel Joy Scott was born in Denver, Colorado on August 5, 1981. She was the third of five kids born to Daryl Scott and Beth Nimmo. Scott's entire family are devout Christians. Her father was a pastor at a church in Lakewood, Colorado, and worked as a sales manager for a Denver-based food company. Beth was a stay-at-home mom. Rachel was an energetic and lively child. She displayed great concern for the well-being of others especially if they were in need. She developed a passion for photography and poetry at an early age. Rachel attended Dutch Creek Elementary School and later Ken Carl Middle School before she finally enrolled at Columbine High School. At Columbine, she was eager to learn and she received well above average marks. She had a special flair for music, acting, drama, and debate. Rachel was described as a very straightforward individual. If people asked her questions, she would answer them directly. She never wavered in her faith in Christianity either. She was very active in her Celebration Christian Fellowship Church, helping to set up events and such. Rachel was also an aspiring actress. She had the starring role in the Columbine School play called The Smoke in the Room, and was in the process of even crafting a new play that she planned to partake in in her senior year. In March 1993, she visited the church that her aunt and uncle attended in Shreveport, Louisiana, and chose to commit herself to Christianity. By April 1998, five of her closest friends at CHS had distanced themselves from her because of her overbearing commitment to her faith. Because of her beliefs, she was occasionally subjected to mockery by several of her peers, including Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold. Rachel documented this in a letter to a relative a year to the day before her death. The letter included the words, Now that I have begun to walk my talk, they make fun of me. I don't even know what I have done. I don't even have anything to say, and they turn me away. I have no more personal friends at this school, but you know what? It's all worth it. There are many occasions throughout Scott's adolescence where her family observed her praying both at church and at home. Her mother said that her daughter would usually pray on her knees, with her head bowed, her hands upon her face, and that often, these particular prayer rituals brought tears to her eyes. In one instance, Rachel was writing a prayer for one of the future perpetrators of the Columbine High School Massacre. By the age of 17, Scott was an attendee at three churches, Celebration Christian Fellowship, Orchard Road Christian Center, and Trinity Christian Center, where she choreographed dances at the Sunday services. Rachel wrote in her journals that her spiritual awareness developed greatly through attending this youth group, and she became known as a leading advocate within it. Rachel had several issues with her self-esteem, though. During her years at Columbine, her family described Rachel as being blind to her own beauty. Rachel, although popular among her peers, would occasionally resist certain social events with her friends out of fear that she would succumb to the temptation of drinking alcohol. Rachel had a serious relationship with the boy, but she chose to end it over concerns that might develop into a physical one. Rachel was the first person to be shot in the Columbine High School Massacre. She was shot four times with the High Point 995 by Eric Harris and passed away shortly thereafter. She was eating lunch with her friend, Richard Costaldo, on the lawn outside the west entrance of the school. Costaldo was also targeted and he was shot eight times. He was permanently paralyzed from his injuries. Rachel Scott quit smoking at the request of Nick Baumgart, who later took her to the prom. If she hadn't quit, it's quite possible that she would have been at the smoker's pit during lunch instead of in the line of fire. The other shooter, Dylan Klebold had actually known Rachel since kindergarten and had even been the sound tech for a talent show that she performed in 1998. 
When the sound broke down, it was Dylan who saved their performance by hooking up a reserved tape deck. Rachel had been performing a mime dance. Watch the Lamb, which portrayed Simon of Serene, who carried Jesus across along part of the Via. Two days after the massacre, Craig Scott appeared on the morning television broadcast of the Today Show for an interview with anchorwoman Katie Couric. Isaiah Scholes' father was also present at this interview. Couric later recalled that the interview was one of the most memorable and even spiritual experiences that she had ever had. Rachel was buried at the Chapel Hill Cemetery in Littleton on April 24, 1999, following a two-hour service held at the Trinity Christian Center. Her funeral was one of the first services following the massacre and was attended by more than 1,000 people that included friends and staff at Columbine High School. The Reverend Porter began the service by addressing the congregation with the question, what has happened to us as a people that this should happen to us? He then addressed the solemn crowd with a speech that included references to Scott's pious character, kind nature, and love of her fellow human before stating, you have graduated early from this life to a far better one where there is no sorrow, violence, or death. Rachel first received a journal as a Christmas present from her mother in 1997. She began to regularly populate her journal with her thoughts and life experiences over the next 16 months, often addressing her entries to Christ, whom she repeatedly referred to in these entries as her best friend. The journal entries also include many poems, drawings, and prayers, in addition to accounts of her efforts to welcome new students to her school, and of her offers of friendship to students who had been considered outcasts, those regularly subjected to mockery because of ailments or a handicap. Scott offered her continued support to all these people and willingly met or talked with them, conveying her continued friendship and support. Rachel's parents were inspired to write a book named Rachel's Tears. It was about their daughter, her faith, her inspirational journal entries, and the impact of her loss on their lives. The book was published on the first anniversary of her death. Two more books were to follow. These were inspired by their daughter and her legacy as well. They were called Rachel Smiles, The Spiritual Legacy of Columbine Martyr Rachel Scott, and The Journals of Rachel Joy Scott. A Journey of Faith at Columbine. These books were published in 2001 and 2002, respectively. Both parents have expressed their hope that those who did not know their daughter would find inspiration in the book's description of the principles their daughter had during her life. There was also a 2016 film named I'm Not Ashamed, which is directly based on the life of Rachel. It is directed by Brian Bow and stars Macy McLean as Rachel Scott. The movie also uses some of the contents of Rachel's journal for voiceovers. Rachel's Challenge is a non-profit and non-political national organization whose stated aims are to advocate a safe and positive climate and culture in schools in a campaign to quell school violence, bullying, discrimination, and both homicidal and suicidal thoughts in students. Through the more than 50 designated speakers and their international expansion of Rachel's Challenge, the annual international student outreach of the organization is estimated to be in excess of 2 million. The program itself typically involves a one-hour audio and video presentation hosted by the Rachel's Challenge speaker to assemble students with the aim of motivating those present to analyze how they treat others. The Rachel's Challenge speakers include Daryl, Craig, and Mike Scott, Guest speakers include Nicole Nowlin, who was wounded at age 16 in the Columbine High School massacre, and Adam Kyler, a former Columbine student who had harbored suicidal thoughts until Rachel, noting he was the victim of bullying, offered her friendship and support. Overall, Rachel Scott was a very influential student at Columbine. She had many friends and always made it her mission to spread positivity wherever she went, always reaching out a helping hand to those who needed it. Her friends and family were devastated to have her leave so early on in her life, but the impact that she had on the people around her is truly outstanding and will never be forgotten. Friendship is a very important thing, and it can even rescue us from the darkest of places that we might reside in. Emitting empathy, compassion, and respect for others are some of the many principles that Rachel lived by. Her legacy will live on, and she will never be forgotten.